There was a really interesting debate about feminism on HuffPost Live. It was also really wild and people started screaming at each other. Uh, and I wanted to share it with you guys. This is Gavin McInnes, who's a writer and co-founder of Vice, and he was uh, talking to some professors here. I had to chop it down a little bit because it goes on for a long time, but let's listen and then we'll discuss. Why are all you wimps taking it for granted that violence is bad and that being macho is bad? That's how we got here. This idea of this beta male being powerful and in control <laughs> is is what, 20, 30 years old? You're going against 40,000 years of evolution. And if you want to talk about baseless, stupid violence punching someone in a bar, that has been plummeting for the past 50 years. And to say we're a culture doused with guns, gun violence has all gone down. So totally irrational, stupid violence has all been going down. And so this idea that there's all these shootings, so they're on the rise. It's just a, it's a quantifiable myth. But the idea of men having to be tough, sorry, but we're the breadwinners breadwinners for the majority of cases in the Western world. And yeah, there's an element of violence or at least toughness in running a business. Just the other day, this co-worker was telling us, what the fuck, you moved this director over this other job? And, it, and I had to come back and say, don't fucking give me this what the fuck shit, okay? We moved the director to a job that was paying more money. It was almost like a fist fight with words. And I had to do that in order to generate income to pay my bills to feed my children, okay? So... This innate toughness that men have is crucial to our survival. And but Gavin, but Gavin, well, isn't, I don't think it's not crucial. But, but, but Gavin, isn't, is isn't, isn't society changing in the moment where women have that toughness as well, and women are becoming the breadwinners, and that women men aren't are just the sole breadwinners anymore? We've trivialized childbirth and being domestic so much that women are forced to pretend to be men. They're feigning this toughness. They're miserable. Study after study has shown that feminism has made women less happy. They don't. They're not happy in the workforce for the most part. I'm sure 7%, I would guess 7%, like not having kids. They want to be CEOs. They like staying at the office all night working on a proposal and all power to them. But by enforcing that as the norm, you're pulling all these women away from what they naturally want to do, and it's making them miserable, okay? They don't like that shit. I want to I wanna let, I wanna let Marianne ju jump, on, jump on this one. That's ridiculous. Go ahead, Marianne. Yeah, I'd like to say as a feminist that I'm pretty darn happy, and I don't think I'm in the minority, and there are plenty of studies showing exactly the opposite, that when you actually have couples, when you have men and women both, are happier when they actually have accepted the fact that there is no such thing as innate characteristics. There is no such thing as women really want to do this and men really want to do this. That's exactly the source of policing and oh, control well, and the kind of misery. I'm, I'm not done yet, Gavin, so you can be aggressive on your own time. But, but the idea here is that there's nothing about being tough or being aggressive or being successful that is at all related to being a male. It has everything to do with trying to make sure that you can be a good person and be good for the rest of your, if your family if you choose and you're contributing something to society. It's a really pernicious myth, this idea that there's something about being male that makes you either better equipped, better able, more likely to succeed or to do any of these things that we should value in our society. It should be a fairly simple conversation that if there are good things for people to do that improve everybody's lives, that make society better, less violent, more interesting, more creative, more fun, more sexy, those are things that we should be talking about that everybody can do. And it's just a sign, as I was saying, of weakness and fear and, and at least some kind of uh, figurative impotence to say, no, it has to be like this. I demand that it say like this, and all of you who are doing things that are different are messing with nature, and I really need you to stop. That's a real sign of weakness. I'm sure it's possible for them to be house husbands who are perfectly happy and good at functioning, but you people have taken that as the norm now, and it's ridiculous. You look ridiculous, okay? When I, when I see the guy, we've got guys who won't even, their wives won't take their last name. They, they, stay at home while the wife makes money, and they think that they're happy, and I'm sure a tiny percentage are. But when you swing the pendulum so far away from the natural world, you all look like a bunch of fools. Yeah, but Gavin, you're, you're confusing the natural world with societal norms that were established only, only 100 years ago in terms of taking someone's name, or hundreds of years ago. You're not, these, these aren't, this isn't the natural order. That isn't evolution. Well, who says it's not the natural order? I'm talking about 40,000 years, you're talking about a generation. And I see these people, okay? I see these 40-somethings, who've been pushed, these women who've been pushing their careers, and they're fucking 
sad, okay? They want to adopt. They're taking hormones. They're trying to, to argue about stuff. Can we get a, uh, can we get a fucking surrogate? Uh, they're, they're, they're making twins because they're taking so many hormones. They're spending tens of thousands of dollars because they waited too long. And I, I can see it's going to happen to you. I forgot your name, but... I, I know you don't have kids. Marianne, no. Marianne, we, we, yeah. have to, we have to go, and I want, I want you to respond to that and, and, and wrap us out. Well, I do think it's interesting because Gavin is, in fact, presenting what's wrong with masculinity right now. It's this insistence that things have to be a certain way. What does this evidence for that? I'm not that? insisting says, anything, wow. you fucking idiot. Oh, Gavin, see, take it, exactly, take it this down. This is what masculinity looks like. This is exactly what it looks like. Now, why is Gavin so scared? Why is he so frightened of the fact oh, that my God. some women don't want to have kids? Some women do. Some men want to take care of their kids. Some men don't. Nothing should be frightening about that. It's it, the only thing people need to be scared of is people like Gavin who are simply imposing their way and saying it has to be this way and pretending to be concerned about people's happiness. If people are truly happy doing something, if it really is in their instincts, no amount of culture is going to change that. It's not as though you stop being hungry because society tells you not to. So the fact of the matter is, if our society is getting more equal, men are doing things that they didn't do before, women are doing things that they didn't do before, and we're getting healthier and happier as a society, there is nobody who should really be crit criticizing that. Yeah, whether you agree or disagree with that guy, you have to admit, he's a massive douche. And also, uh, when I was reading about him earlier, one of the things said that he was like the godfather of hipsterdom. Oh, that makes me hate you even more, you pathetic loser. But, uh, alright, so let's break this down in, in, a, in a couple quick ways here. Uh, when it comes to feminism, here's the thing. Feminism totally makes sense if you define it in a way that says women should have the same opportunities as men. Right? So in other words, uh, the pay gap, for example, this is the perfect go-to example of sexism, or I think it's rather indisputable, that women make 77 cents to a man's dollar for the exact same work. That's just not okay. That's just absurd and pathetic and stupid, and we should do something and change that immediately, right? So if you're talking about fighting that, I, I will be on the front lines of that battle, and if it means that I'm a feminist by definition, then call me a feminist, I don't care, right? Or, or when it comes to job discrimination, how oftentimes women don't get a fair shake uh, when it comes to getting a job in a male-dominated society, more unemployment there, or whatever the case is, and they don't have the same opportunities. I get it, and I'm leading that battle, and I agree with it. But the only... Uh, area where feminism loses me is the radical feminism. And I always think of a story that we covered on the show, I believe it came out of France or Germany, uh, where there was a, a Barbie playhouse that somebody decided they were going to make, it was going to be their business, and, you know, little girls or little boys, if they wanted to, can go there and they see, oh my god, all the different Barbie exhibits and yada yada, it's a real life Barbie playhouse, right? And uh, feminists in that area protested the opening of it and tried to get it shut down. And they said, no, 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 you are uh, trying to mold the minds and indoctrinate these girls that they have to act a certain way. To which I respond, no, sometimes a little girl wants to play with the Barbie no matter what direction you want to push them in. It is what it is. We shouldn't ban Barbie because you think it's indoctrination. And the irony is the actual indoctrination is when the radical feminist tells little girls, be, beat off your feminism, beat it off you with a stick, right? Beat off probably wasn't the best term to use. <laughs> Beat away your feminism. Don't, you know, if you actually feel like a feminine, like that's your identity is feminine, you're, you shouldn't. Everybody should be masculine-like. That's where feminism loses me, and that's where it gets kind of radical. And there are such things as radical feminists. But the idea is to uh, pick the right battles and, you know, fight the right things. And then, of course, I agree with feminism, and I think anybody who disagrees with it in that respect would be wrong. And the final point here... Look, there are biological differences between men and women. So, for example, men have more testosterone, uh, women have more estrogen. Obviously, we have different genitals, right? Like, these things are obvious, right? But outside of that, there's really no difference. And that, that, that's the reality of it. And so, for people to say, uh, women naturally want to do X. No, they don't. You made that up. And, by the way, you can see it throughout nature that that's not true. So in certain, uh, with certain uh, types of animals, the women are the dominant ones, and the men are the passive ones, and the ones that stay home and nurture the kids, yada yada. For all, and it varies throughout the animal kingdom.